So there have been so many times wherein I have said throughout this Amy Warden Soap Challenge Challenge thing that we are following the tutorial given by Amy Warden or the soaper that is the guest teacher thing person. And then I follow it. And then I look at Georgia May's footage expecting that she followed it. And it's wildly different than what I had done. And then I start to wonder if I had actually followed it or, and today's one of those days that left me very confused. And I will tell you more about the poor and the things and why I'm confused. Like, I mean, for this specifically, not in general, because I'm just generally confused in life in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 344 of 365 days of soap, and today the Soap Prentice is tackling the clamshell technique. Now yesterday, I had like shown you how the clamshell technique goes down, and I had propped up the opposite end of my mold that I was pouring on to do the pourry pour thing, right? And I'm almost positive that that's how you were supposed to do it. I mean, I was very certain that that's how you were supposed to do it yesterday. But then I saw her soaps today and I went, maybe I did it wrong. Because she propped up the opposite end. She propped up the end closest to her. And so, interesting. And so it actually, it does become interesting. Like, does it matter which side gets propped up and does it change the pattern? You're gonna find out right along with me with all the pouring and the things and the cutting and the jazz, you know, right now. So let's go find out together. Okay, it is the Soap Prentice's turn at the clamshell and she's super excited. Look at that, she's, she's ready to go. Now, we are still using the black pepper bergamot from Maple Street and I love the scent blend. It is a very nice unisex scent for sure. I would actually, call it more masculine than anything else because I put it in the Rat Pack line um, about six months ago. This is the only other one that I've ever, this is the only scent that I'm familiar with from Maple Street that we're using in this, this month's worth of uh, tests. Everything else, they are actually all brand new scents. Now, you saw my thing with the uh, the clamshell yesterday, and I loved that. Like, it was such a delightful, delightful pour. It was so therapeutic, so... <sighs> I loved this. This was a, a very, very, well, a therapeutic pour, and I'm like 100% here for that. Like, having... It's everything that I love in making soap. It's the very fluid batter and the beautiful swirls and even the kind of what other people might think of as like monotony, like doing the same thing over and over again. Nope. Nope. I love that. I, I absolutely love that. I, I love the day, like every day, because we make, you know, like a thousand soaps a day. And so those soaps have to get stamped. And so the monotony of even uh, stamping the bars and that you get into your flow and your groove and you just, 
you know, stamp, pull, stamp, stamp, pull, stamp. So, I mean, it's just, it's delightful. I love that because it allows my mind to open up into really amazing uh, places and I get to think and it's cool. And so I'm, you know, here for that and I'm hoping that the Soprentice will be here for that as well. Do you see the purple on her arm? Yeah. We, we are always disasters, whether it's me or her. It's all a thing. It's not... It's not a highly curated uh, uh, channel for soap around here, Sudzers. It is a, uh, this is a real version of soaping. And in the real versions of soaping, messes are made. And that's part of the fun. Now, her batter is delightfully fluid right now. I, it's so, it's beautiful. And I'm very excited to see what she's doing with this. Although, it looks like she's just doing two colors. And that's, I mean, that's cool. That's totally cool. You can totally do a beautiful clamshell with two colors and it will be great. And so, okay, what's this? So with yesterday's thing, right? Like I had my colors and then I took another thing and I then, oh, she's, oh, she's be She's being smart about it. She's never actually worked with this black pepper bergamot before. And just by name of pepper, the assumption is it's going to accelerate. And so she's just scenting a little bit at a time before she does her pour. I like that. I like that. That's smart. That's a, that's a good, I know what pepper tends to do in, in scent combinations and in soaps. And so she's gonna, she's learning from that. Like I, good for you. So Prentice, that's amazing. Like that was, incredibly smart well done you but you know the important bit with all this is going to be whether or not she can actually get her two pyrexes into her long-nosed uh, container without completely screwing it all up like I did yesterday with the first one right because I'm not an ambi pourer it's like Zoolander he's not an ambi turner I don't know how many people actually got that joke yesterday, but look how delightful that is. <gasps> She's so good. That's beautiful, my friends. Oh my God. Go into the comments right now and tell Georgia how great she is at being an ambi porter because look, that's perfect. That was not what I did yesterday, but hers is, yes, don't move it. It's perfect. You did it. Be proud of yourself, my dear, because you did the damn thing. Now let's go pour the damn thing. Okay, now on to the pour of this guy. Now, you remember yesterday, you essentially picked three points in the mold. So far right, far left, and then middle, and you pour, you know, a measure of soap batter out in a little kind of squiggly pattern. And usually the best thing that I think Tree Marie Soap Works was the one who did this tutorial, right? For the Amy Warden Soap Challenge. And it was, you know, left, right, middle or middle, left, right to do this. But, and so on and on you go. And then the mold gets filled with this lovely soap batter that has the little because you shake it a little bit coming out and that's much like with the thin lines if you're trying to get a knot into it if you're trying to make wood grain it's kind of the same concept just doing it from a different well a different section of the mold really because usually you do that when you're running the length of the mold and not from the end but i don't know if you guys can tell this based on the shot but you see what she just did underneath the uh, the cookie sheet there? She has the side that she's pouring on propped up. And that was not what I did at all. I did the opposite side. I propped up the opposite side. Right? No, I totally did. Like, that's... I propped up the opposite side and then continued to lower the mold 
as needed and then propped up the side that I'm actually pouring on you know almost like 90% into the pour to make sure it still continue to flow and so now I'm confused because normally I would never actually I did it exactly the way the tutorial said I'm pretty sure but now I'm questioning myself who else has done the Amy Warden soap challenge did they say to prop up the end like the far end of your mold or the pouring end of your mold or were there multiples were there multiple ways to do it did tree marie soapworks do it the way that i did it yesterday and then amy warden came on and said i didn't do it that way i propped up the end that i was pouring on because this is different than what i did yesterday right pretty sure I'm pretty sure this is different and so now I'm super fascinated to cut it because I think we're probably gonna do the same thing we did with mine for the so apprentices and cut it multiple ways so cut it like a mantra from you know essentially taking a chunk of soap from the entire loaf and then cutting it from I mean, I can never explain these things right. This is why videos are important, really. And then cut them normal in like the one inch chunks on the mold and maybe cut it in a thin lines, just like we did yesterday, because now I'm fascinated with like, does it matter? Her batter is still beautifully fluid, just like mine was. And she's still using the same technique and using one of my shampoo bars to prop up the uh... Or maybe that's Neptune maybe she's using Neptune to prop it up I'm not sure because they're both that color but she's propping up the end opposite that I did for mine and so this is actually interesting does it actually matter what side of the uh... the mold that you prop up which is one of the cool things about you know exploring these challenges or doing like you know known techniques or whatever just in general on, on on this channel because like we show you all the other things what happens if you don't have a fluid soap batter well this is what happens I mean not this specifically because this is a delightfully fluid soap batter it's beautiful so this is my new swirls blend I think I talked about it yesterday and in the in the video and if not, it's my new swirls blend. And I have a new swirls blend master batch. Uh, I don't know. Maybe 27 times a year. I'm always changing the swirls blend because that's the one that I get to play with the most, which is fun. But this is fascinating. She propped up the wrong side. I'm gonna feel like such a tool if I also did this yesterday and I'm just not remembering it right and propped up the side I was pouring on but I'm almost positive I propped up the opposite side right I did that right I <sighs> hey when you make as much soap as I do in a day it it's actually very easy to make all of the uh, for, for things to sort of run together and to be super confused which is why you should always take very good notes and to take very good notes I actually do recommend a rocket book and I will link that like down below because uh, rocket books are life they're like the future of keeping track of records and things and then you don't have to have you know like in my case 70 five-star binders like the big ones filled with soap recipes and notes just use a rocket book it has like 12 pages and it's perfect it's literally the future and that is very interesting I am totally looking forward to seeing what this cut is so this will be put into the oven for sea pop and gel and then we will we'll cut it okay and on to the uh, cut first impressions 
the colors are not they're not super defined um, and so I'm a little bit concerned that the beautiful clamshell is not going to really stand out and pop with this because that is a beautiful bar of soap right there but it's kind of hard to tell and yes we have four hands because yes all of the things it's kind of hard to tell that because the colors are very pastel and they don't really there, there's not good contrast between the two because they're very light and so at that point after I taken that that soap from her look at it I asked I asked the soap apprentice so what do you want to do this is an interesting clamshell but would you like to cut it's you know the the other way like a mantras way or a Taiwan sort <sighs> different names for the same things you guys and so we cut it the different way so you're cutting the top off and that would be the top and then you have you're exposing the pattern in different ways on the inside and that is yes that's beautiful and that's definitely uh, that's definitely a, a clamshell that's that's gorgeous you have the little squiggly lines and all the things my only critique on that would be and I don't actually critique Georgia May because I love her and she's amazing in all the things would be more contrasting colors next time I do think for this particular pour that she did the best way to cut it and that's lovely the best way to cut it would be cutting it like this like you would with a mantra and um, we have more soap paper um, to really reveal that pattern better but now I really want her to do it again because she actually really enjoyed this pour I want her to do it again with more contrasting colors so you can see you can see all the little squiggly lines better it's a beautiful bar of soap. The, the scent blend is extraordinary. It's so delightful, for sure. But, yep, that one works. And so we're going to cut the rest of these just regular top down in your one inch increments like you normally do with a loaf of soap. And both ways completely work. And it's, and so I guess it doesn't exactly matter where you prop your mold for these. But, the difference in color would be the only thing that I would I mean bitch we are 344 days into this and I think this is the first time I've ever actually critiqued Georgia May and been like maybe you should try because she's delightful at all the things and this actually in person is absolutely gorgeous but on film which you know makes it hard to to do for like website if you're selling or whatever maybe some brighter colors to make them all stand out but look at that isn't that gorgeous that's gorgeous it's just there's a lot of lighting problems to make sure that all of those gorgeous lines can really be fully captured on film but other than that like it's a delightful pour she did an amazing job and again the scent blend is great my swirls new master batch is delightful and georgia may as always is freaking amazing in everything she does and that is a uh, day 344 the clamshell technique the so apprentice's turn so I know that her color her colors are very very light and hard to really like see between the two but ultimately I don't really think it matters what side the mold is propped up on for for me I sort of get that you don't want it to all run down to the other end and so it makes sense to have the far end propped up but also her close end was propped up and she still got clamshells out of that. She still got the little lines and the little, so that totally worked. So yes, I think both ways work. Of course, you know, so Prentice is a professional and she makes everything work because she's awesome at everything that she does. And uh, if you are interested in either one of these clamshell technique soaps, both scented with black pepper bergamot from Maple Street, ultimately great scent, soaps well, and has a very strong scent retention for sure, you can purchase them at the website at soapandclay.com. Yes. For those of you who would like to follow me on social media, hey, I'm there. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Cool. Uh, for those of you who are interested in subscribing, you should do that little thing because I've looked at my analytics and over half of you are not subscribed. And that's weird. 
because it's just a button. So hit that button. For those of you who have hit that button, hey, thank you for being subscribed and being my sudzer. I love you. I love the conversations we get to have in the comments. I love all the comments and the DMs and the things that you guys tag me on Instagram. I love the phone calls. I love interacting with you. It's been a delight over the almost full year of doing this every day. And thank you so much for joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. I'm out of here for today. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.